Hi, the recap is my take of an online podcast which seeks to explain for our CXC literature students the poems that appear in the syllabus 2018 to 2023. My name is Jamin Hatton and today is the 20th day of June 2017. Today we're looking at the poem My Parents by Stephen Spender. In fact, it's Sir Stephen Harold Spender because he was anointed by the Queen. How does someone become anointed by the Queen? When you've done something good. And Sir Stephen Spender uh, did much of his work in the 1930s. In fact, he is one of those poets that gained fame in the 1930s as a result of the, the new wave of writing that erupted in that time. In fact, his writing is, is termed political conscious, stricken, leftist, new writing. And that's just a little bit there to tell you about how he got his title and who Stephen Spender is, in fact, Sir Stephen Spender. So he is to be matched with people like W.H. Auden. I'm quite sure you know a little bit about him. But this poem, written around in the earth is there, tells us a great deal about how our parents try to keep us from persons who might not be of the same class as we are. And this guy here did much of his work to show class. When I say class, I mean the people of different social groups. So he did much of his work in social injustice and class struggle in people of the working class. Let's go straight into the poem. My parents, Stephen Spender. My parents kept me from children who were rough, who threw words like stones and wore torn clothes. Their thighs show through rags, they ran in the street, and climbed cliffs and stripped by the country streams. I fared more than tigers, their muscles like iron, their jerking hands and their knees tight on my arms. I fared the salt, coarse pointing of those boys who copied my list behind me on the road. They were lithe, they sprang out behind hedges, like dogs to bark at my world. They threw mud while I looked the other way, pretending to smile. I longed to forgive them, but I never smiled. The poem starts with repeating the title, My Parents Kept Me From Children. So, it's the only place we actually see my parents. So we are trying to understand why is it the only place that my parents is actually mentioned. Now, poems that are from the early 20th century often did not have a title. And as a result of them not having a title, they used the first few words or the first line of the poem to be the title of the poem. People like Emily Dickinson's Because I Couldn't Stop for Death and stuff like that came as a result of that there. So when people are trying to analyze their poems, they went ahead and used the first two or three or four words from the poem itself to be a title. But that might not be the case here. This, my parents kept me from children who were rough. The only instance where my parents is mentioned is that first line there. So this probably tells me that, you know what, this individual here is not really holding on to what the parents taught him. He's not really holding on to what the parents are saying, right? So it, it probably might mean he didn't title the poem, or it more obviously might mean that the individual is not trying to hold on too much to what his parents said. My parents kept me from children who were rough, who threw words like stones. These, this is like imagery here. We have a little uh, simile in the middle there, but it's largely imagery. Trying to show us how different these individuals were, these children were, from this person, this persona we are seeing here. He talks about how their clothes were torn. And that's important because 
it gives us the idea that these individuals, yes, they were rough, but it also gives us the individual that they were not so financially well off. And that is the person that Stephen is... He talks about the class or social stratification of people. People that are placed in different class because of uh, their wealth or because of who they know or because of who they, they look like. Right? So we see... And this is... Per particularly here we are seeing that they are placed in the different classes because of how they appear so he's saying that my parents kept me so probably the parents and the and the person himself are a part of a higher class well not probably they're obviously a part of a higher class and they're looking down on the other individuals the persons who are wearing torn clothes so the parents warned him don't go with those bad company bad boys they look terrible don't go with them so that they're painting a picture of what the start of it is their thighs show through rags of course showing again their poverty and how they climb streets and stripped by the country stream showing you again there how normal they were in the caribbean this is quite normal for boys to play by the trench or for boys to play by the stream or for you to climb cliffs that's quite normal in the caribbean but in you remember that Stephen is British, so this is not normal for them, right? So it shows that these people who were doing this were not of the same class as the poet and his family. He says, I fared more than tigers, their muscles like iron. Very, very important there. He's talking about how rough these boys were. And he's, he's saying that he fear their muscles more than he would fear tigers goes on to talk about their jerking hands their knees tight on my arms so obviously here what they're doing what the boys are doing here are the boys are obviously bullying him and they're bullying him in the sense that they are rough with him probably beating on him but there is some amount of admiration still going on here even though he is being bullied so it gives us the idea that the boy is not listening to what his parents told him to, to keep away from these individuals yeah he might have been forced to play with them or be might be beaten as a result of their company but there's some amount of admiration in this boy's encounter with these persons his parents warned him about goes on to talk about i fear the solid course pointing of those boys who copied my lisp behind me on the road and that there is selling as a lisp i hope you, you you might have gathered by now after watching all my videos that i do have a lisp so <laughs> Um, it's like that. They're 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 laughing at his speech impediment. They're laughing at his, his speech problem, and as a result of that, he somewhat felt away. But again, there is still some admiration. As we come down, the, as we come down to the end, you will see that admiration I'm talking about. Again, those similes there show us how rough the children were when it compared to this well-dressed boy soft-spoken boy uh, it gives us the idea that these boys operated like animals when compared to this normal or higher class poet persona all right so it goes on to talk about they were lithe they sprang out behind hedges uh, you know, hedges would be the fenced, bushy areas, and their light, they were light suggests that they were flexible, they were free, freely movable, uh, like dogs to bark at my world. Uh, that part, bark at my world, yeah, onomatopoeia, but it gives us the idea that the boys, the poor, light boys, were as if they were chastising the world of this individual the poet 
it it has though they're saying huh you look so different to us but don't brag about it because we are about the same that's how it, it, it appears there they threw mud yeah quite straightforward there but this is where it comes into context while i look the other way the look the other way suggests that he didn't mind much yes they were mean yes they were bullying him but he didn't mind and he said pretending to smile he didn't smile but he pretended to smile but it's saying that he longed to forgive them and that's the part where i said that he is somewhat admiring them and even to the point of envying the normal life that they they're living Right, so he longed to forgive them, but they never smiled. So he would have forgiven them, but because they never returned a, a warm gesture, they were never friends. So remember, I said, remember I said earlier that Stephen Stephen spent most of his time fighting the class system. As a result, Stephen lived with many individuals who, when he was older, of course who were of a different class than he was so this here showed us that really he wanted desperately to be friends with these boys he envied the life he admired the life they were living a normal life they were living not this uptight way his parents wanted him to live right and he longed to forgive them he longed to smile with them he longed to be their friend but they never returned that smile they never returned that warmth to him as a result Probably at that point they were never friends. You can compare this poem to any similar one under the themes children, parents, childhood experiences and my I'm putting in social stratification there. You wouldn't see such an ambiguous uh, theme but nonetheless childhood experience is obviously one that would most obviously appear in the exam. Uh, social stratification in the sense that People who are different of different classes because of their wealth are separated or are being contrast as we would have seen with the poet here who happened to be someone well dressed, someone soft spoken the list uh, against someone or opposer versus someone with harsh words or well dressed opposed to someone with torn clothes. So we see that social stratification there. He is of a higher class and then there are this these poor life boys acting like animals so that there are any those are the themes that you can compare this poem under and anything else your teachers would have taught i really was hoping to get this done in under five minutes nonetheless i guess time flies when we are having fun like this comment let me know what you think of the review let me know what you wish for me to do next and subscribe so you can get updates on those future postings thank you very much for listening you were with me, Jamin Hatton. Until next time, goodbye.